Hello, I'm Kyle Brown with Night Force Optics, and today I want to show you the differences between the Ventress models and the NX models. I understand there's a few questions and concerns out there about what makes them different. So let's go right to the product and let's show you the differences. We'll start off with our Ventress model. Our Ventress is our lesser expensive scope than our NXS models. The Ventress model and the NXS model have duplicate image quality for the end user. At the end of the day, the optics are equal. What you get is features and benefits that are different from one model to the next. On the NXS models, we consider that a more rugged scope, built for more treacherous conditions, things that can take an impact, thermal changes, and uh, overall more abusive state in the field. Ventress model scopes are more designed for Ventress events, uh, events where accuracy is more important in a controlled environment, sitting on a bench rest, uh, shooting F-class prone, or varmint shooting where there's not going to be a lot of things be, uh, beat around, uh, a lot of environmental conditions that are going to be abusive to the scope. Regardless, either scope can take quite the beating. We design and we promote the best scopes made, so we have to deliver that each and every one. Both of these scopes are individually inspected and QA processed one at a time. We're not, we do not lot test, we do not batch test, we inspect them one at a time. Each scope comes to you with a QA sticker and a signature assigned to it. Each product that has that signature assigned to it ensures you that the product was built, QA'd, and inspected before you got it so that when you get it out of the box it's ready for the field. So I'll go over each an individual, each an individual component with you to show you what the differences are. On the NXS model, the power zoom ring is dependent with the eyepiece. In other words, the eyepiece will turn with the power zoom ring. On the Ventress model, the power zoom ring is independent of the eyepiece. So the power zoom ring turns by itself. The ocular piece on each of these scopes, this is the diopter focus for adjusting the focus on the sharpness of the reticle. As you notice, this is a European style fast focus eyepiece. This eyepiece is a more of a mechanical design where it has a lock ring, this piece right here. If we'll hold the lock ring, loosen the eyepiece, we can start turning it multiple turns out or in and make sure that we have the reticle focus. Once the reticle is in focus for our eyes, and each person's may be individually different, we lock the lock ring. Once the lock ring is locked in place, notice how the eyepiece and the power band are integral with one another. So the power band ring is dependent upon the eyepiece when it turns. We go forward with the scope. We'll notice that on this end of the bench rest model, we have the rheostat illumination. That means we can adjust the rheostat to on and off with, it, let's see here, 10 different illumination settings from low to highest, and obviously turn it back off again. On the NXS model, the illumination is on the side. Right here, you pull it out, it turns it on. Push it in, it turns it off. As we move forward into the turret assemblies, on the bench rest models, each click adjustment is worth one eighth minute of angle. On the NXS models, on the quarter MOA adjustments, each click value is worth quarter minute of angle. As we move forward uh, onto the bench rest model, you'll notice we have a collar. The collar is an adjustable objective used to help you eliminate parallax from your sighting distance. In other words, it helps you get the reticle image and the image of the target on the same focal plane so there's no apparent movement of the reticle while shooting at the target. So that is a very fine focus. It, it adds dimension to the overall size of the scope. And it is indicated in numerics out to infinity. On the NXS models, we have what we call a side parallax adjustment, or what some people refer to as side focus. And we go from close range uh, to infinity. Either system performs quite well. Some say on the adjustable objective model, it's a more adjustable and very precise adjustment on parallax. And while others say this is a little bit more what I would cons what they would say and I would consider uh, finicky as in you, a very small movement makes a lot of adjustment for parallax. One thing I'd like to show you on the Ventress model that's different from the NXS model is the plunger, the spring plunger housing. This is a spring plunger housing. This is not anything that you need to deal with. This stays left alone. This is mechanical. 
Do not open this up. This is part of the internals of the scope. By putting the spring outboard, gets you a lot more minutes of angle adjustment internally. One of the things you should notice on all these scopes that we make is the adjustments are very tactile, very positive, and you can hear each click. Each movement is robust. Each movement is accurate. We offered you the most precise product, and that's what we want to deliver each and every time. And there that about does it. That's the difference of our scopes. And I'm Kyle Brown with Night Force Optics. We're here to represent 44 families of Night Force Optics, and we sincerely appreciate all of your support.